Hello and welcome to D&D with High School Students presents Level Ups. Previously, before the camera started recording, we talked about your choices at level four because you you did have choices and you chose to bring up some of your odd numbered uh, attributes, your dex and constitution, so that they were in fact even numbered, thus gaining bonuses. But let's go through the level up process now. So first, you are now level five. Yay! Yay. Level five warlock. Now, uh, if you're following along at home on page 106 of the player's handbook, you'll notice that uh, there's a chart for the warlock. At level five, your proficiency bonus goes up to plus three, which is very important because it affects like literally many things. Should I do that right now? Yes. So starting with your saving throws, that you have proficiency in, that's gonna go up by one each. And you know what, while we're here, it's always good to just double check character sheets because maybe we missed something along when you went up to level four. So you go down the line, you check all your stats, you check all your skills, even the ones that you don't have proficiency in, and you just make sure that all the numbers line up. Looking at your proficiency bonus and any of your skills that you have proficiency in, making sure that that adds in with the appropriate attribute or ability modifier, and then from there you're good. So let's take a review. You now have Arcana proficiency, which is intelligence-based, right? Yeah. You have an intelligence bonus of plus one and a proficiency bonus of plus three, which makes it plus four. What? Yeah, three plus one is four, be true. Um, your athletics should be plus five, no? It is yeah, dude. Strength plus two, proficiency bonus plus three, athletics should I be a plus have five. Proficiency in athletics. Oh, you don't. I'm dumb. <laughs> um, deception though, four plus three is seven. Good. Intimidation. Four mm -hmm. plus three is seven. Seven. And stealth seven. is one plus three is four. Now, have you gone through and looked at all of your other things? I think maybe you have, but just double check that your anything dex, con, intelligence based should all have a plus one because you have a twelve across the board there. Double check, double check, double check, 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 double check. Um, good? Yep. Happy? Everything's looking good. Okay. So uh, as a um, warlock, what kind of armor are you wearing? I am. Just leather? Yeah. Maybe? Leather or no. studded? Just regular Something leather? Lame. Okay. So um, now at fifth level, looking at the rest of this table, you know three cantrips. So let's flip over to your spills. Spells, Sp spells. You have three cantrips. I don't know why I don't have a proper spell sheet. I already sheet have for a, you. a couple. Of okay, so you should so have three picked out, right? Mm -hmm. And then also, you know six spells total. So, you have two spell slots, and now you have access to third okay. level spells. Mm -hmm. You also, this is a big one. You gain another invocation I know. at fifth level. So let's talk spells, Breacher. Recap, what do you have for your spells? What are the I six actually, spells that you know? I chose a couple, of, a bunch of spells, and I regret a lot of them. But, yeah, um, so this is a great opportunity <laughs> when you're leveling up your character to review. Like, what have you used? What have you not used? Think about, like, you know, if it's time to make a change. Yeah, I think it definitely is time to make a change. Okay, so what are some of the ones that you have, and what things might you be thinking about? I have Witch Bolt, which I kind of like. That was used effectively, wasn't yeah. it? That yeah. came in handy. A nice fat two D12s, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, armor of Agathy. Mm -hmm. Didn't really use that. I was hoping that I would, but didn't really. Hellish Rebuke. I was waiting for someone to hit me so I could cast that on them. I was a little bummed out about that. Mm -hmm. um, shield, which I like. I like shield, because that's a save my life type thing. Wrathful Smite, which I don't like. So what, what about um, armor of Agathys and shield? Is there any overlap? In other words, is it the kind of thing where maybe you want to know more spells now that you have access to third level spells and you're like, oh, armor of Agathys is lame or I haven't yeah. used it. Maybe yeah. it's not lame, but you just don't feel I, that you're I don't like it. it. I'm not using it. So uh, protective magical force surrounds you manifesting as a spectral frost that covers you and your gear. You gain five temporary hit points for the duration. If a creature hits you with a melee attack while you have these hit points, the creature takes five cold damage. It lasts for an hour, which is cool. 
Now let's compare that to the spell that you said you do like, which is Shield. Shield's, um, let me see where we are. It is on page 275. Um, casting time is reaction, that's handy. An invisible barrier of magical force appears and protects you until the start of your next turn, you have a plus five bonus to AC. Which brings my AC up to 18. What sucks is that shield is a first level spell that only lasts for one round. Would you agree with that statement? Yes. Like, wouldn't it be great if shield lasted a lot longer than that? But I don't know that it does. It doesn't. It's until the start of your next turn. Mmm. That is rough. That is rough. Okay. So some things to think about, right? Yes. Would you... So you would remove Armor of Agathys, right? Yeah, I don't okay. like that. So that, that, that probably isn't. It. And you said the last one was which Wrathful one? Smite, Wrathful Smite, which I don't smite. use okay. at all. So you're going to lose that one. Yeah. Now, you did enjoy some second-level spells. What were some of those that you used, and what were some that you didn't so much use that you're rethinking? I used Scorching Ray. Um, I liked that one. Uh, invisibility, I used to steal the box, which yes. I, I like invisibility. Handy blur, spell. on the other hand, I have not really been using. I would like to get rid of Blur. So Blur is, is more defensive, people, for those who don't know, um, on page 219. Your body becomes blurred, shifting, and wavering to all who can see you. For the duration, any creature has disadvantage on attack rolls against you. An attacker is immune to this effect if it doesn't rely on sight, as with blindsight or can see through illusions, as with true sight. With concentration, it lasts for up to a minute. So defensively speaking, being blurred, concentrating, you can't cast other spells necessarily, but it gives you a minute of having everyone attacking you at disadvantage. Yeah. So would you keep it or ditch it? I think I would ditch it. Okay. All right, let's take a look at some of the spells that you might be interested in now. So as a fifth level warlock, you have access to third level spell slots, which is pretty cool. Um, on page 210 of the warlock spell list, you have counter spell, dispel magic, fear, fly, gaseous form, hunger of Hadar. I don't know what that is. Uh, hypnotic pattern, magic circle, major image, remove curse, tongues, and vampiric touch. Any of those just sound cool? I'll tell you one that sounds cool. Fly? Yeah. I mean... I can fly. Like, being able to fly might be dope. But you know what? Let's look into some other things. Um, having the ability to counter magic might be useful. Let's look at counterspell and dispel magic just to see what they, were, what they are and how they work. So if you are following along, we're on page 229. Nope, sorry, two, 228. Um, bottom right corner. Casting time is one reaction. Range 60 feet. You attempt to interrupt a creature in the process of casting a spell. If the creature is casting a spell of third level or lower, its spell fails and has no effect. Wow. Uh, if, it's a ca if it's casting a spell of fourth level or higher, make an ability check using your spell casting ability. The DC equals 10 plus the spell's level. On a success, the creature's spell fails and has no effect. At higher levels... Uh, okay, so... Maybe you see someone casting a fireball. <laughs> Your group's about to get wiped out. Yeah. Because it's a reaction, you can counterspell it. That's Now, that's, I'm not advocating right. for that, but I'm just saying, when I read a spell that I might not have used, because I don't often play spellcasters, I think about how I could use it. And not just fireball, right? There's a bunch of other spells that you could possibly counter spell but yeah. I think when somebody's I th when I think the word counter it basically means something's offensive against you and you're countering it dispel magic on the other hand has a longer range choose one creature object or magical effect any spell of third level or lower um, on the target ends for each spell of fourth level or higher you make a DC check so a little bit different because counter spells literally interrupting a spell yeah Dispel magic is basically defeating magic on a person, object, or an effect. Counterspell, you have to do it as a reaction, because you can't cast it after it's done. So if yeah. somebody does darkness, counterspell is not going to work on darkness, because the spell's already cast. Dispel magic would work on darkness. So you just see what I mean? There's a little yeah. difference there. 
Dispel magic is not a reaction. You're dispelling magic. Counterspell is a reaction to magic being cast. So subtle difference, but kind yeah. of important for you guys to think about. Definitely. Um, what else are you interested in? Fly, gaseous form, hunger of Hadar. You know what? I don't remember. Hunger, what hunger of Hadar, of Hadar is, is crazy. Yeah, let's look at look, let's look it up. Where is that? It is on page two fifty one. Okay, one action, one hundred and fifty feet range, concentration up to a minute. You open a gateway to the dark between the stars, a region infested with unknown horrors. A twenty foot radius sphere of blackness and bitter cold appears, centered on a point with range and lasting for the duration. This void is filled with a cacophony of soft whispers and slurping noises that can be heard up to 30 feet away. No light, magical or otherwise, can illuminate the area. The void creates a warp in the fabric of space and the area is difficult terrain. Any creature that starts its turn in the area takes 2d6 cold damage. Any creature that ends its turn in the area must succeed on a deck saving throw or take 2d6 acid damage as milky, otherworldly tentacles rub against it. Yeah. So that's concentration up to a minute and it's got 150 feet of range. That's that's pretty dope and scary. That, um, scary. that might be one that you would want to think about knowing because that's, that's wow. So strictly speaking, according to the player's handbook on page 107 under the Warlock, additionally, when you gain a level in a class, you can choose one of the Warlock spells you know and replace it with another spell from the Warlock spell list, which also must be of a level for which you have spell slots. Basically what they're saying there, Beecher, is that you can't just clean your spell list and replace it with yeah. a fresh batch. Yeah. And if I was, you know, if this were some tournament level thing, we'd enforce that rule, but I don't really care about that rule. I think it's fine as a warlock every time you level. I'm not saying like every time you long rest. You know how there's some spell casting classes that can just wipe the slate clean every time? Yeah. But as a warlock, I think when you level, you know, your patron wants you to be able to serve it, him, her, whatever. So why wouldn't they allow you to refresh, basically? So bottom line is, is you get six spells that you know. Yes. Total. Between yes. first, second, and third level. And I also know some other ones. Just from like from it. your invocations, yeah. right? Okay. okay. So you're gonna think yeah. about that. You can you can add in your third level spells that you know, but you're gonna get a total count of six plus whatever you get from your um, packs and whatnot. All right, yes. so Pact of the Chain. Which is your your pact that you chose, right? And that allows yeah. you to have Jaquan, which is huge and has been part of your life. All right, let's talk about the invocations because at fifth level, you get another invocation. So which ones did you already choose? I don't remember. I chose Agonizing Blast. Okay, that was one. Big, yep. And then Voice of the Chain Master. Voice of the Chain Master which is the allows one that me lets to you to talk and look through Jaquan. So you get a third one. Have you looked at any of these? Postscript, have you thought about any of the, any of them in terms of things that you might want? Um, yeah. I got kind of interested in Eldritch Sight, so I can cast Detect Magic at will um, without expending anything. That's crazy. Uh, That's super powerful. And then I also looked at uh, Eyes of the Rune Keeper. You can read all writing because weird text is a weird thing in our campaign. That would break my game, but I welcome you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, like, and that's another important thing, DMs. Don't remember that it's not an adversarial relationship. If a player has something or their character has the ability to do something that might break your game, then you as the DM have to adjust. Don't be a cock blocker. So you, you could take that. Um, other <laughs> things that I've enjoyed now as yeah. a, I have played Warlocks. Actually, the, 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 my Warlock got up to 17th level. So... Um, Warlocks are kind of squishy. Yes. Armor of Shadows allows you to cast Mage Armor on yourself at will, <laughs> which is, I mean, that's kind of cool. Yeah. You know, it's not going to, you're not going to have like a 19 AC, but it, you know. Brings me up to. Right. Like if you don't have, one. yeah, it, it's not, it might not be that great for you because you, if you have leather armor, that's fine. Obviously, um, 
Eldritch Spear is a great companion to El Agonizing Blast. It basically gives you like a stupid range of 300 yeah. feet. Now, if you're in a dungeon, 300 feet doesn't do too much for you. But if you're outside somewhere and you're, you know, there's opponents 300 feet away, you could start picking them off while everybody else is still like loading their arrows. Um, another kind of cool thing. Um, Mask of Many Faces allows you to disguise, I, disguise self I at will. That. I've enjoyed using that. Um, uh, let's see. Repelling Blast, again, works great because you can blast people away from you, but maybe you're already good with the blasting thing. Yeah. Um, trying to think of what else. So at level 5, yeah. So you really like the bigger kind of invocations come up at like 7th and ninth and higher levels. Yeah. But Mire the Mind, you can cast Slow once using a Warlock spell that. slot. You That's can't a cool do so. spell. I mean, a Slow is kind of a powerful spell. Yeah. But is, it, is it worth burning an invocation on? Mm. And it also uses a spell slot. It uses one of my slots. So right. it's not like just a thing. I guess. I, you know what? Your gut instinct might be good. Eyes of the Rune Keeper, you know, is not... It's not about power. It's not about blasting and defeating enemies, but it is super useful, not just in my game, but I think like in any game, if there's somebody in the party who can literally read all writing, that's enormously <laughs> beneficial and powerful. Yeah. And the DM can integrate that into the game. Like, not just in my game, but like if you're running a game in the Forgotten Realms, you can have, you know, the party come across some some cool old like ancient text that reveals stuff and now that you have somebody who can actually read it, that could lead to story adventures and hooks. That might be that might be a good one. So yeah. you think about that, but um, those are basically the biggest components of the level up for you, is just finalizing your spell list, taking into account your um, patron. What, which patron do you have? What's your... Uh, which patron? Is it from one of the other books? Yeah, I think it is. It must be. I don't think you have great old one, otherwise you'd have... Like dissonant whispers and all that stuff. Yeah. What did I? The fiend, the fae. No, you must have one of the other. Um, I think it gave me things. spells. Oh, here, hexblade. Oh yeah. That's where it is. So that's <laughs> why that's why you have shield and wrathful smite. Oh, that's so why wrathful So you you don't smite. lose that. Okay. Blur and branding smite is second level. So add those in. Blur, branding smite. You get that. And then third level, you get Blink and Elemental Weapon. So you'll have to add those in. So those are those are spells that you get access to that don't count against the total six. So taking those out, or like put a star next to them so that we know which ones are from this list. So Shield, Wrathful Smite, Blur, Branding Smite. So I already had Blur. Yes. Blur, Branding Smite, and then Blink and Elemental Weapon. Those are the, the spells from the Hexblade. I'm going to look that up for a second while you're updating that. So now, once you put stars next to those spells and write them in, how many spells do you have after that? Because you, you can only have six total. I have five right now, so I can add one more. Okay, good. So then all you need to do is pick out one. But again, if you want to lose one, like you talked about maybe getting rid of Armor of Agathys. Yeah. So I'll let you ditch that if you want and pick something else from the first level list or just take that out altogether and pick out more stuff yeah. from third level. That might be a smarter move. So one of the things that you get is Elemental Weapon. A non-magical weapon you touch becomes a magic weapon. Choose one of the following damage types. Acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder. For the duration, the weapon has plus one bonus to attack rolls and deals an extra 1d4 damage to the chosen weapon when it hits. That's not going to help you with your scythe because it's already magical. Yeah. But it can last for up to an hour. So if you were concentrating and you wanted to imbue someone else's weapon with that, that's cool. Or if for some reason you wanted the ability to do certain kinds of damage... Yeah. You you can imbue this on your on your scythe. Yeah. It's not gonna do your your it would basically replace the necrotic damage that your scythe does when it's activated. So if you say for example you knew you were going somewhere where fire damage was needed, 
uh, you're fighting trolls. Great example. You're going to fight trolls. Maybe you use elemental weapon. Yeah. Okay. So that's it for Beecher's level up. Um, he's going to pick his one other spell off camera. And then uh, the next time you'll see Beecher will be during the summer session. So stay tuned for more. And thank you, as always, for your support. Peace out. Love you. Bye.